I want to talk about the BMW M5, which has always been, as I'm sure we all know in here, the ultimate Q car. It is a fizzing lunatic in a Geoffrey Chaucer suit. However, the new M5 has turbocharging, so it's kind to polar bears, and it has four-wheel drive, so it's safe, and it has an automatic gearbox, and that's all very nice. But is it what we want? <laughs> Let me, first of all, explain the basic recipe for a BMW M5. It's a four-door saloon with a boot at the back, space for five businessmen in the middle, and a monstrously powerful engine at the front. That's the main thing about an M5. It must be extremely fast. And this one, they say, is the fastest ever. So I've just pulled up alongside someone in his lightweight running gear and his AMG training shoes, whereas I am in a stout pair of brogues and some heavy moleskin trousers, which means I'm going to lose. Or am I? I can't go back forward. That's 100 miles an hour in about seven seconds. On 20. On 30 miles an hour as I cross the line. It is unbelievable that. The cheap, heavy four door saloon just beat the sports car. That's an M5's job. <laughs> On the face of it, then, the new version seems to tick all the important M5 boxes. It's sensible, and thanks to 592 horsepower, it is Ferrari fast. But what about the turbochargers and the automatic gearbox? And what about the all-wheel drive system? Does all that mean it's no longer capable of being a swivel-eyed lunatic? No, not really. <laughs> yes, because a great deal of work has been done to completely eliminate understeer, as you can see, the steering does feel a bit weird. And yes, because the engine is turbocharged, the soundtrack is a bit muted. It's like listening to someone play the bass in the next room. But other than that, oh, ho, 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 ho. I mean, there must be turbo lag. There has to be. But I can't feel it. And the automatic gearbox must change more slowly than it would if it were a double clutch system. But still feels pretty speedy to me. And even though all four wheels are driven, it can still do this. If you want it to do this all the time, you can actually turn off the four-wheel drive system. Seriously, you can turn it off. Just have it in rear drive only. Behave like a complete yobbo. Yeah! <laughs> and that's just the start of the M5's adaptability. You can choose how much traction control you'd like. You can choose how sporty and responsive you want the engine to be, how uncomfortable you'd like the ride to be, how meaty you'd like the steering to be, how quickly you want it to change gear, and what you want on the head-up display. You can even choose what sort of noise you want the exhausts to make. 
Oh, and look at this one. This menu allows me to choose what fragrance comes out of the air conditioning vents. I can have the Blue Sweet, which is a waft of pure water pearls, or I can have this one, which gives me a golden shower of fiery aromas. And this is all very Pacific Rim. It's very CGI, and that's great. But the truth of the matter is that the 50-something businessmen who buy this car will never change the fragrance setting or any of the other stuff. He'll put it in four-wheel drive comfort mode on day one and leave it there forever. And if he's going to do that, there may be a better alternative. It's made by a German tuning company called Alpina. And it's another take on what a fast BMW should be like. It costs about the same as an M5 and has a broadly similar 4.4-litre twin-turbocharged V8. It also has four-wheel drive and an automatic gearbox. However, this car was not developed at a racetrack. The boss of Alpina says if you engineer a car to be good at the Nürburgring, it won't be any good on the road. And he may have a point on that. So, instead of making the front suspension firm and racy, they tuned it to be able to deal with potholes. Then they changed the steering so it would corner more like an airliner and less like an F-16. Inside, they gave it blue dials and a thinner steering wheel and softer leather. And look at this, something you don't get in the standard M5. It's a comfort plus setting in which the 50-something businessman can spend his life wafting about. But don't think that the basic fast BMW recipe has been ruined. Because it really hasn't. It actually produces 600 horsepower. That's more than you get from the M5. It has more torque, too. And there's no nanny limiter. So this will do 205 miles an hour. Does this mean, then, that on a track, the comfort wagon can keep up with the ultimate sports salute? Well, even though it was fun finding out... <laughs> is no, not quite. The M5 is torta, more nailed down, more on it somehow. So, on a track, make no mistake, the M5 will pull away. In fact, it is doing. We're both cats, it's just that he's a cheater and I'm a lion. If, then, you care about shaving tenths of a second off your lap time at a racetrack, you're better off with an M5. But for going home on the M4 in the real world, which is what I'm about to do, I'd rather use the Alpina. So I shall. Interesting observations. So, um, so after all of that, you would have the worst car. Well, yes, because it's better. It sounds better to me, I've got to say. Oh, well, it says the voice of speed. Well, I tell you what, let's find out how fast the M5 goes round the Ebola drone. And it's off. She held it against the brakes there for a snappy start, and clearly it's worked. Flying onto the isn't straight there. Wouldn't look, it's a bit damp. Right, having to work at the fat steering wheel. Woomph from the four exhausts on the up change. And now plunging into your name here, looking a little edgy. But then this 
is nearly a two-ton car. Heaves forward under braking, but keeping it all in check in the corner. And now, back on the power. Spooling up both turbos for the fast return run. Looking good. Ooh, dabbing off a bit of speed at the midpoint. And ready. Yep, really hard on the brakes for Old Lady's House. This is where understeer will show itself. But no, looking tidy. Not bad for such a heifer. Taking no prisoners on the blaster substation. Torturing the Pirellis through there. Just field a sheep to go. Tidy through there and across the line. <laughs> it looks good, but it looks like it's heavy. It's look heavy. Anyway, there's the uh, there's the lap board, and we can see the old M5 look down there, 17th place, one minute 24.2. Uh, so let's see where the new one goes. Is it quicker? Oh, it is. Yes. Uh, oh my word! Funny. Four seconds faster. That's staggering, isn't it? That's, That's absolutely problem. amazing. Now, and I have to say, um, we did um, we did time the Alpina, but we haven't uh, we haven't filmed it. Why not? Well, because it's going to be slower. <laughs> You it are, is. You are going to look such an ass if it isn't. <laughs> well, I am, but it won't be. Ooh, let's find out. Let's see where it goes. This is the Alpina. There you go. You see, slower, as yes. I said. But 121.6, not bad. Not bad. So, if you do want a taut, fast, super saloon, his advice is get the flabbier, slower one. Yeah, it's better. <laughs>